JJ, the CPA here, hope you're doing well. Wanted to give you an update here mid-September talking about stimulus and tax, little things that you may have missed that you don't want to. So I'm gonna go a little fast and furious. I'm gonna put a lot of links in the body of this video, but I'm gonna talk about, yep, PPP, Employee Retention Tax Credit, EIDL, and some additional tax credits, tax deductions, Let's get into it, and if you see how long this video is, you're gonna see that we went fast and furious, so stay tuned until the end. All right, so employers now that give time off to their employees to go and get the vaccination for COVID can now get a tax credit for that under the family and sick leave credit. So whatever's paid to that employee for the time that they're off, the IRS will give a tax credit to offset that, which is a beautiful thing. On the COVID home tests, that is now something that can be paid for out of a health savings account, the HSA, and qualifies for a medical deduction on your tax return. Now, the SBA and the IRS, for those that have been affected by Hurricane Ida, have put out special provisions. I'm gonna put a link to both sites related to this, most notably, there is an economic injury disaster loan program for those that suffer from natural disasters, including this one. So if you know of those that have been affected by this, make sure that they're aware of special provisions, including extended due dates and tax, uh, tax credits as well. Now, with the EIDL, the economic injury disaster loan, still a lot of questions. Is it or will it be forgivable? No, the EIDL is a program that's been around for a long time. It will not be forgivable, it is a loan. So if you have any illusions of grandeur that that will happen where it will be forgiven, you need to wipe that away because it won't. Now for those that have not filed for PPP2 forgiveness, you've not filed for PPP forgiveness for the PPP that you got, in 2021, thumbs up to you. Hold on tight. There might be, maybe, see the other videos I'll give you a link to, that there could be monies that could be made available again for PPP. How? Well, I'm gonna give you a link where I talk about it in length, but there's going to be money going back, if not already, into the PPP program. Yes, it all got paid out, but money's coming back in through repayments for those that don't qualify forgiveness as well as fraud. We're talking potentially well over 80 billion coming back into it. Don't wait, don't file for forgiveness for PPP2 yet. You have 10 months following the covered period. So you get the money for PPP, you got 24 weeks to use it, that's your covered period, and then you have 10 more months before you have to start making payments on it, which in essence would be before you would want to make an application for forgiveness, which is in the next year. So sit tight. We know those that hauled off and filed for forgiveness last year were on the outside looking in as more stimulus came out. So just hold tight, see if there's anything else yet to come in the coming months. October 15th is the tax deadline to file for your 2020 taxes. Yeah, you heard that right. Those that have filed extensions, that's due October 15th. The key for you to know, though, is that if you filed an extension and you owe tax, remember, an extension is only an extension of time to file. It is not a, an extension of time to pay. So what are you waiting for if you owe? You need to get it filed, get your money in, and help reduce down penalties and interest. The Employee Retention Tax Credit, if you haven't heard of it, if you haven't looked at it recently, you are missing the boat. It's a simple calculation to qualify in 2021. There are two ways, but the simple calculation is, is your gross receipts down in any quarter in 2021 compared to 2019? So many are missing that key word I just said, 2019. You're comparing the quarter in 2021 to the correlating quarter in 2019. If you're down 20%, you qualify. 500 or less employees, all the wages, for that quarter, qualify for the employee retention tax credit. It's 70% tax credit. All the payroll for your employees for the entire calendar quarter in 2021 times 70% is your tax credit. Now, again, it is limited to 10,000 
of wages per employee per quarter. It does include the health insurance that is paid by the employer. You got to be looking at this. You don't need to be closed and have your revenue down. It's an either or. So you got to take a look at that. I've got a beautiful seminar. You should check it out. I give you a full idea of everything you're going to get in it. Three and a half hours with a PowerPoint to go along with it. Uh, well over 150 pages with Excel spreadsheet and worksheets, etc. Speaking of the employee retention tax credit, HR Bill 3684 has passed the Senate. 67 senators have passed it, so it's bipartisan. It's in the House. It will be voted on soon. In this bill ends the employee retention tax credit September 30. Currently the law is the employee retention tax credit goes till the end of the year. If it ends early, there's no employee retention tax credit for those that are affected by COVID for fourth quarter 2021. I'm going to give you a link to a video where I talk about that and maybe what you can do to voice your opinion to keep that alive. Now for the employee retention tax credit, the self-employed don't qualify for it on their self-employed income, but don't miss it. If you're a self-employed individual filing a Schedule C, filing a Schedule F, and you have W-2 employees, you can get the employee retention tax credit on your employees. Also talking about the self-employed, for those that were affected by COVID, you were out, you were caring for somebody with COVID or quarantining or caring for somebody under quarantine or symptoms of, do not miss the tax credit that goes along with this that's alive in 2020 and 2021. It really adds up. I'll give you a link to it, but it's Form 7202. It's thousands and thousands of dollars of potential tax credits for the self-employed that are absolutely being missed. For year-end tax planning, here's the first thing I want you to do. I'll give you a link to Form 1040. Don't go to sleep on me. This is simple, straightforward stuff. I want you to get your own Form 1040, but I'll give you a link to a blank. And I want you to look at three line items. I want you to look at line item 15 and line item 24, and then also line item 13. Line item 15, don't go to sleep, okay? You can know your taxes easy. Line 15 of your Form 1040 is your taxable income. That's the amount of income that's being taxed after all deductions, etc. Line 24 is the amount of tax that you have. So what's 2021 going to look like? It's actually pretty simple in my opinion. How will 2021 be different from year 2020? Will it be up? Will it be down? Well, whatever it's up or down, it's going to affect the line item number 15. And that line item figures out your tax. I'm going to give you a link to a uh, page on the IRS website where you can go in and within about five to ten minutes you could do a pretty thorough tax estimate. Why am I talking about this? We're getting near year end. The first step in doing proper tax planning is what is your year going to look like? You may think you know but what does that equate to in taxes which is line 24? Your tax is going to be up or are they going to be down? Don't get caught watching the paint dry and then get surprised in April 15th. The other thing to note is if you want to do anything about your taxes, you have to do it before year end. As an individual, as a small business owner, cash basis, you have to get whatever it is that you're going to get done by the end of the year. There's a few exceptions to that you probably know. You can put money in retirement, not as an employee, but as a self-employed up until the due date of the tax return, April 15th. Self-employed can also put into a SEP or those that own their own businesses can put into a SEP up until the due date of the tax return and the extensions. You can put money in an HSA after the year end. But why did I just tell you all that? Because that's pretty much all you can do. That's pretty much it. If you want to prepay, you want to, in essence, help uh, determine when you're having to take income into account for taxes, you need to start looking at it right now. How do you start? Get your Form 1040 for year 20 and look at that line item that I just gave you, both of those. Now, I want you to also look at line 13. I'm so glad that you made it to here because if you own a business and there's a zero on line 13, you may have missed out on a huge tax deduction. 
It's called the Qualified Business Income Deduction. Here's what it is in simple layman terms. You take your net income from your business times 20%, poof, out of thin air, it is a deduction. Let me say it another way. You net 100,000 on your business, you get a $20,000 tax deduction out of thin air. That reduces down your taxable income, it reduces down your tax. Does line 13 have a zero on it? Yes, you need to figure out why. If it has a figure on it, figure out how it was determined. If you own a business, you can't be missing out on this deduction. Just because you have a professional involved, as phenomenal as they are, they're only as good as the information you give them. You wanna make sure you're paying the least amount of tax? Focus in on line 13 business owners. You wanna pay the least amount of tax? Look at line 34, it's your total tax. Compare that from year to year. What are you gonna do about it? Start thinking about that right now. Now let's talk about stimulus checks. Old news, wrong. First and second stimulus checks that came out in 2020. If you didn't get the full amount, it's on your 2020 tax return that you reconcile that and make sure you got all that you're supposed to get. Good news, if you somehow got too much stimulus on check one and two last year, you don't have to pay it back. But stimulus check number three that came out this year, that is most of you based on 2020. If you haven't filed your 2020 return, get after it so that you can get hopefully your third stimulus check. Let's also talk about the advanced child tax credit. Many are misinterpreting this as an additional stimulus check. It's not. What it is is an advanced. Keyword is an advanced. So when you work for somebody, I'm giving you a parallel. When you work for somebody and they give you an advance on your pay, that means that the next payroll period, the next paycheck you get, your pay is going to be reduced by the amount of your advance. Now, wipe that away because I was giving it to you as an example. Know this, if you're getting the advanced child tax credit, you want to track this because when you go to file your 2021 tax return next year, you will qualify, hopefully, for a tax credit. If you're getting it in advance, hopefully you'll qualify for the child tax credit. But then whatever you got in advance, whatever you got through the end of this year in 2021, you will need to reduce down that child tax credit on your 2021 tax return. It's a time that it'll be reconciled. Now, if you're getting it and you don't wanna get it, there's nothing you can do about it at this point. But I am gonna give you a link related to that. If you haven't filed your 2020 return, well, then that's most likely why you're not getting your advanced child credit if you're hoping for one. But I'm gonna give you a link that gives you some more information and a portal at the IRS website that you can get a little bit more. Now, to sum it up, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, the SBA have very recently announced that it's now up to $2 million. $2 million directly from the SBA. Side note, the EIDL has always been up to $2 million, but above the certain dollar amount the SBA would loan directly, you would have to get with a bank that was particularly involved in the SBA EIDL program. Don't even worry about that now because you can now get up to that $2 million amount directly from the SBA. If you haven't applied yet, I'll give you a link. You go to the SBA website and you apply. If you have applied, you've received, then go back into your portal where you originally signed your loan documents for the EIDL and there you will see a uh, opportunity to request an increase. So you gotta log into that. There's a little bit of a process to it. If you already got an increase, meaning you got the 150,000 last year, we know they increased it to 500,000 this year and you got that increase, you then also would go into the portal and request an additional increase to that. Now, because they have the increases or if you're looking at it now, you're not going to be able to get the, uh, the EIDL grant at all just because you're applying for it. So don't go apply for an EIDL thinking you're going to get the grant because the grants that are alive now are for the targeted and the targeted supplemental. All right, hey, there's a whole list. And in the body of this video, 
I'm giving you links to a lot of this information. This is a nice update that I wanted to go through with you here now in mid-September. All right, get ready for year end. That's probably the number one thing I'm gonna tell you. The number two thing I'm gonna tell you is look at the employee retention tax credit. The number three thing I'm gonna tell you is do you think cash flow wise you're gonna need a loan in the next 12 months? You need to look at the EIDL or increasing it. Wake up because we potentially are looking at additional economic effects related to everything that's going on. So don't be on the outside looking in. And lastly, don't file for PPP forgiveness if you got it in 2021 yet. You got plenty of time, stop worrying about it. Your banks are asking you, tell them you got 10 months from the end of your 24 weeks, which is well into next year. Hold and wait. The bank can't affect your forgiveness in any way shape or form. All right. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. Have a great one.